I'm so happy to do this. Um, thank you for making time um, to speak with me today. Super, super exciting. Um, I saw the movie and I was like, I have, to fr I have to phrase my questions so carefully to avoid any spoilers. <laughs> when really all I want to talk about is the spoilers. <laughs> but um, I'm wondering when you were first brought the script, were you and the rest of the cast already told it's going to be these plot twists, beware, or the, when you read the script, was that your first time seeing it? Um, the first, so Mary kind of, Mary Viola broke down how the sequel's gonna be played out on the phone with me. So she would just give me like little plot twists and like where the script's gonna go. And then when she sent me the script, that's kind of when I read like the details of how everything's gonna look and all the callbacks and, and all the, uh, us like I mean it is hard not to say certain things because it is a spoiler but <laughs> how certain things keep happening to us and um so it was pretty much the script where like page by page it had all the things that were gonna happen but Mary told me like how Cole like all thought about it and it, it was all like in his head and I thought that was like a great way to do the sequel mm -hmm. um, to do that too because he's all grown up now he was so little right it's so funny like boys and girls I guess too it's like within a span of two years especially around Judah's like age in real life like so much happens yeah. but then like five years old to like seven years old it's not as drastic so it's like right. wow he it could have been like 10 years that the first one was filmed so <laughs> <laughs> totally yeah um and it's such a powerful movie I think that obviously the genre is Horror comedy, you know, we laugh, we scream, we get scared, um, we, you know, banter about it. But I think it's also a huge commentary on social media. I mean, even in, um, you know, the first movie and the second one, it's almost hinting at what will you do to get more followers, you know? So I think that it's also important that we, you know, explore those themes. So have you had any experience, you know, just being in the industry with any, like, issues with social media or anything like that? And why do you think this is an important, like, secondary message to get across? I sold my soul to the devil just a little bit, and that's why <laughs> I only have 200k followers, because I wasn't fully in it. Like, I'm like, let me just try a little bit and see how I like it. I don't think I'm going to go full in, <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, you know, like, I think with the Zoom, gener Zoomers, are you a Zoomer general? You look so young. You look I do young. look very young. I'm actually 23. You're very young. <laughs> yeah, but I'm considered. You're generation Z, right? I'm on the cusp. So technically, I've looked this up because I've always wondered, 1980 to 2000 is the textbook definition of a millennial, I think, mm -hmm. and I'm 96. So I'm a millennial, but obviously, like, I have very Gen Z tendencies, you could say. I love that. So, like, with with your generation, it's probably so different than my generation with social media. I mean, like, um, I'm not, like, I don't use it every day all the time. Like, I have friends that post, like, eight things in an hour, and it takes me, like, days to just post one, because I'm like, do I really want to write this comment? Like, I just think about it a little too much. But um, I can't even imagine what it's like with the social media thing because I remember when Facebook and MySpace was starting like people were like why aren't they saying yes to my friend request and now mm -hmm. it's become a huge different kind of thing where everyone's life is so available to everybody just through the phone yeah so I mean it is interesting um the social media thing it's just really taken off a life of its own it has you know and I like what you said about you know people worrying about why haven't they accepted a friend request? Now, I guess the equivalent would be blocking or unfollowing, but it's the same thing. We put so much energy into these, not necessarily artificial relationships because some people online you also know in real life. Obviously, I follow my own friends on social media, but it is something you have to definitely take into consideration. And I think this movie, um, if people are going to take any deeper message from it, it explores that really well. So... Yeah. Um, and something I had to ask, I think I can get away with phrasing this without spoiling anything. Um, you might have to like be tread carefully, but obviously, uh, you know, we know your character comes back. Um, 
similar qualities, I would say, to the first movie, but a little more badass, I would say, at least from what I picked up. <laughs> um, but if was there a different character you would have loved to play, and if so, why? Let's see. I would have liked to, let's see. All the characters are really different, don't you think? I. Mm, oh, yeah. I would have. I really liked um, Jimmy's character, he's Maximilian. He's like a high school dude, but like that's like 19. But I'm like, I would have loved to have played him if I embodied somebody's character. Yeah. Because um, he's so dude bro -y, but so funny. Um, Batch's character's fun. I mean, like every character in this film has their own kind of quality. I would probably not want to do Robbie's character though, because mm. he's probably very cold all the time. <laughs> We're yeah. In like Pyru and it was like so cold but just just as that but I mean he's pretty badass too because he just can beat up everybody and do all that yeah and he's shirtless and has a six-pack so that in and of itself is always you know great for tv I think it was Allison who said in the first movie I think this is in the first movie if it's not it's not really a spoiler but it was like why is he shirtless and Allison Bella's like look at him why do you think he's shirtless <laughs> um I loved her character as well um yeah, she's really yeah. in this one as well like I think all our characters kind of came back with definitely more I don't know if oomph is the right word but kind of more kind of like edge because we're a little pissed but also a little bit more skilled in our badassium <laughs> yeah exactly like so much more edge like in every aspect like even the visuals of this movie like I was like more scared of all of you than I was the first oh, really? time. yeah <laughs> like are people really scared of us I hope so <laughs> yes I mean I it was so funny I watched it yesterday and I was like I need to watch this before it gets any kind of dark outside or I'm not gonna sleep so but you know that's what you want for a horror comedy so yeah, yeah. um and it, like be up a little bit at night just a little bit yeah, I mean, that's probably what you also want, viewers. You want them to watch it at night and, like, you know, with the big group, and then there's someone in that, you know, watch party, like, scaring people or making noises or spooking people, but I did not sign up for that, so I just watched it calmly. <laughs> um, and something else, I wanted to go back to the genre of horror comedy, because a lot of times, and I even am kind of think this or subscribe to this idea it's hard to see those as like genres that can be compatible it's like either super scary or it's super funny and also lighthearted, and there's nothing dark but uh the babysitter and the babysitter killer queen have kind of taken these genres and merged them perfectly so um were you a fan of this particular genre before or were you also introduced to it just from being in the babysitter i fucking hate horror comedy <laughs> um well, you know, because horror comedy kind of, it's a little bit newer than, yeah. you know, like, than the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which had comedy in it, but it wasn't, like, I guess, like, the camp was just different, like, the comedy is very different, so, mm -hmm. um, it is a whole other thing, so I kind of got introduced to it a little later than people, I guess, um, I was like, oh, wait, I'm involved in a horror comedy. Like, when the first one came out, I was like, oh, is that what? Oh, okay. But um, people love it. Like, oh, yeah. Like, it's like a whole thing. Yeah. And it helps take the edge off. Like, I don't know if you've seen the movie. Have you seen the movie Ready or Not? Oh, with Tamara? I have, I've only seen the trailer. Is it scary? Yeah. So it's scary, but then in the middle of it, like, one of the uncles involved will just crack a joke. So it takes that tension away. And I feel like the babysitter, Killer Queen, kind of did that same thing. So it helps cater to more people. Question. Yeah. You're um, <laughs> so, like, cause when I grew up, I watched movies like Freddy Krueger, like Nightmare on Elm Street. And it was scary because I couldn't go to sleep because I thought there were, like, dead body parts under my bed and, like, monsters, like, about to get me. So that has stuck with me forever. Like, even the sixth sense, like, they'll have scary, like, like real scary moments so it was just kind of like when I'm washing my face I'm like oh shit like thinking something's behind me but obviously there isn't and but like for for comedy I feel like there isn't that too much I mean the first babysitter when we were stabbing sacrifice Samuel I mean I 
think for two weeks I was having nightmares because there was just like so much blood and it was like you're shooting at like 4 a.m. and it was just, and we we're getting no sleep because like psychologically it was a little fucked up. Mm-hmm. But for horror comedy, when you watch it, like you get scared when you when you do like watch it first and like you think something's behind you and never because it has that comedy balance where you have a good time and you have a good scare moment, but then it doesn't linger for years. <laughs> Yeah, that is so spot on, 100% accurate, because I am the type of person to get spooked easily, and last night when I washed my face with my new um, cleanser, I was fine, <laughs> and with a movie like Psycho, I got scared, so I had to carry my cat with me to go down the hall. It's like, I, for some reason, I think my cat will protect me from everything, so if I'm scared, I just take him with me. <laughs> but, yeah, so I guess people can, you know, watch this and you don't need to look for monsters under your bed or think <laughs> that Sonia or anyone's going to come for you, you know. It's clearly yeah. fake because of the comedy and also just because it's fake. So right. that's a, that was a great way to put it. Thank you. Yeah, I was curious. I was like, I wonder if that's like, because even in swimming pools, like, I wouldn't be, or not swimming pools, but like in the ocean, I wouldn't be scared of sharks. I'd be scared of monsters because of the movies I used to watch when I was younger. But yeah. not something that can actually hurt you because it's just like in my brain from what I watch, I'm scared of these non existent creatures. <laughs> yeah, no, it's crazy how impressionable we are when we're young. Like you just proved it. Sometimes it's like it's not really that big of a deal, but it truly is if it sticks with you. So I think the good thing about this movie is it sticks with you, but not in like a scary way, more as a way like, oh, I want to show my friends this movie or something like that. So Right. Yeah. And the score's good in this movie, like, I, I might be sit there for when blood looks like a chip or when it looks like high tea or something, but we have none of that in this movie. Not in the first, not in the second, the blood looks real. Yeah. Know, real gory, and like, I think that brings a, another element of fun, and, you know, you don't have to come out of it, because it's real. Yeah, no, it looks very real, and the special effects, super real, the stunts, like, it was just beautifully done and I'm so glad that you were able to be a part of it not oh. once but twice oh, thank you. of course thank you, yeah of course well thank you Hannah so much for your interview sorry I went a little over I was like really getting oh, into no, what we were okay. talking about no worries I was um, asking you questions too I was like what is it like <laughs> that's true no I loved it it was like a like authentic conversation rather than like a interview I mean it was an interview but you get what I mean um anyway if you just wanted to say uh your socials as well as just a little like call to action like make sure to check out um the babysitter killer queen on Netflix September 10th and just kind of bring it home for us perfect I am Hanme Lee I play Sonia make sure you catch the babysitter killer queen coming out September 10th on Netflix and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Hanami. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) The best end to an interview ever. (laughs) That was amazing. Thank you for getting into character for us. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much. It was nice to meet you. You, too. Have a great rest of your day, and congratulations again. Thank you. Of course. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. (laughs)